this is Lisa from Punk Creation and welcome back. So spring is just around the corner, I hope, and although it's absolutely freezing here today in the UK, um, I don't believe that it's going to be too long before the weather turns and it becomes a little bit warmer. So I'd like to start planning my, my garden for the spring and I thought it'd be a lovely idea to start making some flower pots. Now, I, I made these cute little bowls um, at the beginning of last year, maybe the, the summer of last year. And it's using some t-shirt fabric. And this one was done in the, yeah, this one was done in the bronze Paratex. And then I just covered it, or sorry, I then just painted it with the the terra green and the purples and the blues and things and it's in it's come out this lovely collection of iridescent colors which I absolutely love and then I also made this large one it's the same concept as the small one but this one again it's using the bronze paratex but with this one I just did in the bronze and the gold tones and then I fussy cut some flowers out of a um, a white shirt that was my nan's and I fussy cut them out and then just put them around just for a bit of decoration but the beauty of these bowls doing it with with uh, in the, with this technique is that you, you kind of don't need a lot on the outside because you can pick up textures and stuff from from the actual t-shirt fabric itself so I thought I was going to do a plant pot so this is my plant pot okay so this one I think I got this from home base with a with a plant in but this is going to be my base so let's just measure it for you just to give you a rough idea okay so it's f about five and a half inches high with just over six inches um, diameter so I think this is going to be my base for my plant pot. So the first thing we do is we cover this in cling film because Powertex does not like plastic. Okay, so if you've got a plastic flower pot that you want to use as your mould, then fabulous and use that. I don't. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use um, cling film. However, this cling film doesn't live up to its, or doesn't even cover its objectives, does it? And it's not clinging very well. So what I will do, I won't waste it. I shall just use Sorry about that, I think I just had a power cut. My lights are going a bit funny. Right, so just a bit of masking tape, painter's tape, whatever you call it, just to just to adhere that. So I just want to go through with you what I've got here ready to start my project. So the first thing is just a few dressmaker pins, okay. Um, I've got the t-shirt fabric, okay, that comes in a in a in a roll like this, and I order mine from the Powertex website, okay. And I'm using the bronze Powertex. Now I get mine obviously in massive um, containers like this but they do come in more manageable sizes okay so what I'm going to do first is just start 
soaking. This t-shirt yarn, move that out of the way for a second, in my tray of Powertex. Okay. Now like all Powertex projects, it has to be coated and it has to be well um, soaked but not dripping it just has to be the the, the patex has to be penetrated through the fabric okay if you pick the fabric up and it's literally dripping from the fabric then your project will not work properly okay so bear that in mind I just rub it in right so what I will do keep that to that side okay it's fine the end somewhere Okay, so all you do is you start curling it and twisting it. Like that. Okay. So put some power text just on there and pop that in the center. Okay, and then I'm just going to take a pin and I'm just going to pin it just for a second. Sorry, my lights keep going off. I don't know why. So apologies about that. Okay. Under the pin. I'm just going to keep twisting. Twisting, yeah, just curling it round. In a snail shape. Okay, just going under that pin the whole time. And then as I do it, I literally just go around the top and just paint it again. Just a little more. I don't want to saturate it. But just to keep it together. Okay, when I get to the edge, okay, just show you how I'm going to continue. So I'm now going to take some dress pins and just pin my t-shirt yarn in place, okay? Just a few points around, like so. Okay, 
before I continue, I'm going to paint the top with just a, a bit of power text just to bind it all and to keep it. So very gently, just go around the whole thing, making sure that I can try and get it. I need to get it as flat as I can because otherwise the the plant pot isn't going to stand up straight. So it might be that I just have to change it a little bit okay I'm going to go around the whole of the pot and I shall come back a bit closer to the end. Hi, so when I left you, I was going round my pot with my t-shirt fabric. Okay, now what I did is I carried on going all the way around, okay, and then left it overnight so this is the pot now I've taken it off the china pot as you can see okay so this is what I'm left with I'm left with a nice robust um, plant pot as such um, which is a base I mean there's bits that are that bit got very thin um, the 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 t-shirt fabric was very got very thin um, but it's a base for us to work on all right so when I'd finished tying it off I put a pin in it I don't know if you can see that pin just there I'm going to leave that pin in it because what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of lace here that I just want to line or go around the top with so I'm literally just going to use it. I was going to take it out and then I thought, well, I could use it to hook that on. So what we're going to do is we are going to put some Patex in a tray, okay, so that we can start building this up. Now I've done what I normally do and just collected stuff from around my workshop. So I've got a bit of paper here that I'm going to see if I can treat and use on my plant pot. I might not be able to because, or I just have to put my plant pot inside because otherwise the, the weather after a while will, will damage that. I've got some cogs here, some metal ones. I've got some corrugated card here that I've torn. And once I've put the Partex in that, it'll make it really pliable. Okay, I've got some cogs here, some wings that I've made from some edway clay, some scraps of pillowcase that I've torn apart. What else have I got? Let's take you through all this. A bit of chain, necklace that I bought at a charity shop. Okay, so literally just junk that I've got. Uh, a bit more lace, a few more scraps. I've got a zip here that I quite like to use some more metal cogs and bits of old necklace okay now the purpose of me just grabbing everything I can find or that I, I think I might like to use is so that I can sort of do a dry run first it's important to do a dry run because otherwise I get quite frustrated I don't know what I'm doing I don't know what I want to use and then I end up getting power ticks on everything <laughs> so let's just again 
using Powertex bronze. Then okay, good shake. I did shake this up in the house before I came down, so pour some on on there. Okay. Pop my gloves on. I've got some paintbrushes to the ready as well. Gosh, that one's tight. Goodness me. Right, okay, let's let's get this done. Okay, right. Let's pop that there. Let's bring this back in. Now, I've got a little bit here. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bit of pink that the where I hadn't got the original t-shirt fabric right through that bit of fabric uh, through the power text right through that bit of fabric so just pop a little bit on there okay so what we're going to do first is we're going to just put the power text through this piece of lace and then I'm going to hook it around that pin. Now I had no intention of keeping that pin there when I came back to this this morning, but it makes so much sense to, to do that because give something for the fabric just to hook on before it dries. Okay. You've got a little while before it dries just to manipulate it where you want it to go. When I came to look at this this morning, I th my initial thought was to tear some fabric and put it on the inside, but actually it's secure enough not to do that, not to have to do that inside. So that's fine. Just, there's the odd spot that's still pinky from little bits of the t-shirt fabric that I hadn't got Powertex on, but I quite like I don't know if you can see in the in the ah yeah you can you see the gap at the bottom I mean if this does go outside that would be great for the water to go through but I quite like it with a bit organic like that with a few gaps and stuff in so this is going to be my back I don't think I'm going to decorate the hole all the way around I don't think so I quite like the idea of just if I can get the thing to sit still.
so all of these elements on my plant pot have dried okay but I want to do something just on the middle going all the way around the pot I'm not too sure if I want to put any more embellishments on there so what I've decided to do is to create texture just by using bits of cotton fabric because that's one of the beauties of this medium is that you can recycle fabrics and you can recycle clothing and bits and pieces that you've got around the house. So all I've got here is just an old pillowcase that was going to go to the charity shop. And I put little snips in with a pair of scissors and then tore it into strips. Okay. So I'm now going to put some power text onto there and I'm using another strip just to soak up the excess because you don't want it dripping. Just massage it all together. Okay, now what I'm going to do to create a bit of texture when I paint, I'm going to tie the fabric into a knot there and then another one and then a third one. Tricky close on right like that. Okay. And because they're the fabric is frayed, it um it's gonna look amazing when I when I come to paint it. So just a bit of power text just on the project there. I've got some tiny little pins that I use just to hold it in place. And this sort of project with the snail fabric, uh, you know, this stuff, it's perfect for this type of holding it in place with a pin because it just goes straight through the gaps. Is that going to go through that one? just holds it in place while the power text sets she says Normally I would have it, the, the pot on its, on its base, but because I'm trying to record it, that's why it makes it quite difficult because I've got a jar in there holding it down. So please excuse my incompetence. 
Let's do it like that. Can you still see that? Not really. Okay, so that's going to go all the way around. Okay, and once that hardens, that will stick to the base. Okay, so let's do another one. Oh, I've got one here, haven't I? It's fine, I'm going to need three anyway. Can you see this bit here? Where I haven't quite got the power text. Okay, so you would just take a little bit of power text like that and then just rub it into itself. Don't dunk the whole thing because you don't want it that wet. Now I've been asked by a couple of friends or people that follow this channel about the colours of Powertex and the different and, and the way it you know changes colour with different fabrics. So I'm going to do a video on the different colours of Powertex and the different and the ways that it soaks into the fabrics okay so watch out for that one i don't think i have every color of power text but i have quite a good collection so i should be able to do quite a good demo on that going to pin it in just to keep it in and then I will have to just take this up to the house where it's warmer because it's like four degrees and there's sorry minus four degrees in this in this garage it's absolutely freezing this project will never dry on level it's coming in it's gone around a bit high actually isn't it right I'm gonna undo this one and I'm going to place it closer to the wing on this side so that at least the front is the same. So as you can see, having turquoises and greens coming out of that rust, so we'll see what we can do once it's dried. So our pot is dry, okay. Um, it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted. As you can see, not a lot of rust on this cog here. There's a little bit there. I don't know if you can see that. And I did apply a second coat. I did make up another another mix um, and put that on there but I obviously haven't got the the vinegar and the water uh, solution spot on it is trial and error but saying that I do like the way that it's kind of looks like these cogs here are eroded so that that's quite cool and then on the back here you can see a little bit more has come through on there so it's it's not great but it's 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 fine it's fine we'll color it up today and and we'll see how that looks so when I'm doing colors I like to take inspiration from paper pads or things I've got around me and I love this paper pad it's by craft consortium and it's of metal textures and the one that I picked out was this green one And as you can see on there, green's my favourite colour, I absolutely love green. And you can see on there all those wonderful tones and colours. So what I'm going to do is just put this to one side. 
just that I can keep looking at it and taking inspiration from it. So, <laughs> this bit up here. So, um, my husband bought some hand warmers for the boys for school. And they'd use them, they'd come home. And I said, well, what's, in, what's actually in those? He said, oh, I don't know, some kind of component. So I took it out, I opened the bag up and noticed that inside, obviously to get the, the, the heat through, there's lots of little bits of metal. And so I saved it and I used it on my, on my project there. And the response from my husband was, I suppose you're going to power text that, which made me giggle quite a lot because everything in our house is um, used for power text in one way or another. So I put some transparent power text on there and just sprinkled it on and then just le left it to dry. Obviously it didn't go rusty because it isn't, um, it wasn't for that, but it's added some great texture to that. So always be on the lookout for stuff that you can recycle. So this is how we're going to do it. We've got our easy varnish here. Okay. Give it a good old shake. And we are going to pour a tiny bit onto our cling film, like so. Now, we're going to start, I think, by using the sienna. Okay, this is burnt sienna. And they come in these pots here. Just trying to find 40 millilitres in there. So take a, a flat brush. Now this one's from Powertex, just because I like to use these ones, but you, you don't have to, you can use any brush, into our, into our varnish there, okay, and then into the powder, and then we're just going to work that into a paste. Now, as we found out from one of my last video, actually no, from the beginning of this video, this cling film it doesn't live up to its job, so it doesn't cling. So, you know, if you get a cling film that actually clings to your surface, then so much the better. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna grab a napkin just take the excess off okay so wipe the excess off on a napkin and then using your brush flat we're just going to apply the paint like so okay nice and soft don't put too much pressure on it. Keep the brush nice and flat. Okay, rub it all the way around. Such an underrated colour. I don't normally use burnt sienna, but that looks beautiful. It's just what we needed for this sort of rusty effect that we're looking for for this project. But just by that small amount I had on my brush, you can see how far that has gone round. A little bit more on there. Again, keeping our brush very flat.
just by going over it lightly you can see how it picks up the textures in that fabric just there okay just because it, it catches the top of those folds So when you're mixing your your color you don't want it too wet okay so just a tiny bit of uh, varnish on your brush into your color Oops. and then mix it up you don't want it too wet if it's too wet it's too translucent and you'll not get the color that you want on your project I'm going to throw this cling film away at the end. Absolutely useless. Right. Excess off, just so that I don't get it it's completely saturated on my project. And then, okay. So it's picked up that quite nicely. I'm not sure you can see that on the video. So going over these cogs there. So although this hasn't picked up the rust very well, it's picked up that, um, that paint. Okay, so I'm gonna do the inside quickly. is particularly great in here this morning and it's not picking it up particularly well so for the first three weeks this will just sit in my kitchen with a plant in and then once the spring is here um, I shall pop it outside and it'll be absolutely fine So there is my base colour, okay, pop the lid on there so I don't get it everywhere. Right, now we're going to have a look at this and we're just going to look at what sort of colours we want to go for next. So I'm going to start picking out these coppery colours here and I have the perfect colour for that. It's the Colour Tricks Copper, 
okay because I think the the bronze gold isn't quite what I'm looking for so yeah color tricks copper okay not cleaning my brush into my varnish into the into the color and then make my paint up just on the cling film just there now as you can see that that's quite wet so we're just going to add a little bit more of the color tricks pigment to that load up my brush so these these pigments are available on the Powertex website. They come in just under three pounds for a pot. Slightly more, I think, for the the metal effect ones, the metallicy ones, um, but they last forever. So you know it's really good investment. So um, again, just going to very, 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 very gently, just over that keeping our brush flat because we just want to pick up the textures from that fabric and from those embellishments we don't want to sort of go in go in like that See how that paint has picked up texture in that wing and just picking up the textures in that that cog there So now I'm going to do the inside exactly the same way and because that's been on the cling for a couple of minutes I don't have to take off the excess because it would have dried a fair bit so I'm just going to go straight into the bottom can you see that there we go Probably thinking why is she bothering to paint inside because it's going to have a plant in there but I like to have a finished project so that's why I'm doing that you don't need to obviously if you've got a plant going in there plant pot or anything you don't need to paint inside in here today so okay so now I'm going to look at the other colors so I've got a green here and this is called golden olive this is a 10 gram pot again from the website and then I have got here a blue caraco which I'm going to use but we're going to start with the green I think so I'm just going to change my brush. Mix up a green. Love this colour. So beautiful. <laughs> I'm 
so I've already just just a quick just a quick um, stop I've already posted actually my samples board so let me just grab that for a second so this is the samples board that I made and um, I've already posted it on YouTube so with a color like this green you can goes nicely over the bronze like that but that's it on the blue green which is absolutely stunning absolutely stunning it's not too bad on the yellow either actually so it's just when you come to color up your color up your projects obviously you need to think about what sort of colors <clears throat> excuse me and what sort of overall effect you're going to have um, or that you're looking for um, but all of these colors take the pigments so so well you know if you're going to do a project like this I wouldn't have used the the ivory over a pink fabric so um, So you just think ahead to what you want to use your project for but all of these look stunning with that green apart from apart from that one although it's nice on the plane isn't it so yeah just thought i'd quickly show you that let's get back let's get back to this one right So where do I want some green? I want it on my cog for sure. And then we'll use the blue on there as well, just in the, just as a highlight. And then we're going to go do a little bit up here too. Some of that texture from that hand warmer at the top there. Okay, and then I think just to get that texture from the Now, if the rust had worked as well as I wanted it to, I would not be painting it like this. I would have just completely left that if it had worked, but it didn't, so hence I'm doing this. Okay, you see that? Okay. Just a little bit inside. Now we're going to do a little bit of the blue.
I don't know if you just heard that. That was, um, I think that was a cat on the roof. <laughs> just heard these, these little feet. <laughs> oh, doesn't take much to make me smile at the moment. There we go. I don't want to go mad with the blue. Just a, just a little accent. I love this Tim Holtz dye actually. It's worked out really well on there. See that on there. So the most of the blue um, is on the sort of highlighting the cog on there and then I've just <laughs> cats go mad again and then I've just put a little bit of blue on those as well must be chasing a bird or something <laughs> Oh, lockdown giggles, eh? <laughs> Doesn't take much. You're shouting at the video, stop, stop, you've done enough. Less is more, Lisa, less is more. It is knowing when to stop, isn't it? Yeah, I really like that liking that a lot. So that's turned out very nicely. There we go. So I think I'll leave it like that. Oh no, just, let's just put a tiny bit of blue in there. Put the brush down, Lisa, put the brush down. So yes, that's that's how we've ended up with this. Um, I just, the actual product that I've ended up with, um, I'm very happy with. But the idea was just to show you that you can start off with a, a pot or a jug or a bottle or anything really, and you can use it as a mold to produce something like this. Now, if I leave this in my damp garage, it will probably just go a bit soft until it's properly cured in three weeks, okay? Because it is, it is quite damp down here. So I will put this up in the house where it's nice and, it's nice and warm and dry. Um, and yeah, it's just to give you an idea really of what you can do with with Paratex as a medium. So I, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Um, give me a thumbs up, please, if you don't mind. <laughs> and um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for everybody that has. Um, the, the channel is is growing quite quickly and that's that's lovely to see. That's lovely to, um, to know that I'm actually inspiring people to, to craft and just to uh, let their imaginations go. So thank you so much for that. And I look forward to seeing you all very soon. You take care. Bye.